All right, ready? Ready. Are we ready? Ready! ready. Emily, <laughs> can we please have a one word prompt? Gemstone. Okay. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Can you watch the righteous gemstones on Max? No. Oh, you should. There's three seasons. Really good. It's a show? It's a show. I thought it was a movie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Chicago's own Tim Baltz. A lot of good people. The workaholics guy. And oh, the workaholics guy. The guy from uh, Monarch? Uh, no, the other one. The shorter one. The other one, one. okay. <laughs> Adam oh, Monarch. Hey, welcome to the Orange Talking Podcast with your host, Ken and CJ. I say hi, CJ. Hi, CJ. This is the... Oh, wait. I should be doing my sexy voice because it's date movie month. This is the show where we talk over TV shows and movies as chosen by our guests. And this week we watched... No, I almost said the racist gem stuff. Uh, <laughs> Romancing the Stone. Wow, chicka, wow, wow. My uh, my sexy voice is the same as my uh, horror movie month voice. It's for a, those like curious. a slight tweak. A little bit. I did enjoy watching you shift into sexy voice. Thank you. Yeah, yes. my, many people do. Uh, so that's good. Do you want to introduce that voice was, CJ? Can that voice you're hearing is Borat voice my wife, Emily. <laughs> yes, this is my sexy voice. Hello, yes. thank you. <laughs> Did I do it right? Are we still doing that? The Borat thing? Mm, yes. My what? I've never seen it. I'm not sure you were ever doing it. I hope not. <laughs> I don't know. Welcome, yeah. Emily. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, not my wife, yeah, Ken. <laughs> no, yeah. It's Name Only Month, so we're having on, well, at least for the first half, and we'll see where the rest goes, but our significant others to <laughs> choose a movie that we would consider something you might watch during a date night, I think is kind of the, the theme that we've said in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We did watch this together last night, actually. It was a day movie night. Yeah. That's yeah. how Meg and I watched it last night together. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's and working. It <laughs> definitely holds up and there's no problems with it whatsoever. No, we can probably nope. wrap this episode yeah. up. Uh, All right. Yeah. So ratings well, and thank you let's for having me. Uh, yeah. not, not dated. Doesn't seem like it's from the early 80s or anything. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Just a whole whole lot of stuff to just talk about Michael Douglas specifically. Uh, made the uh, mistake of going on his Wikipedia page for a little bit. Taking oh, a trip so down memory lane the on there. That I was going to ask. Okay. <laughs> In my defense, when the movie came out, we didn't we didn't know about Michael Douglas. We we didn't know. Is yeah, what I'm trying to say. I would say yeah, because none of us were born back then when right. the movie came out. So yeah, look, but, let's let's just dive in. Let's get that out of the way, and then we'll talk about the movie. But Michael Douglas, I don't know a whole lot about him, but I know the one thing that Meg told me while we were watching this. Can't wait. And Which for one? those, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure there's many, but the one thing that she told me and those first sensitive of heart, maybe skip ahead 10 seconds, uh, my parents. Uh, <laughs> she said that Michael Douglas got throat cancer and he bragged about it, getting it because he gave yep. his wife, Catherine Zeta-Jones, too much cunnilingus. <laughs> That is, is also that, what uh, we discussed is that real? <laughs> during okay. the yeah. movie. Yes. Yep. Because mm-hmm. it's, uh, he said he got it from HPV, which is a sexually transmitted disease. Which is what dormant in men, right? Maybe I just don't know about it, enough of it, but I, I just think it's hilarious that like you're with somebody and you're going to say that. So there's literally like one person yeah. that people are going to associate that with. Oh my God. I, no, what's more shocking to me, she stayed with him. Like, yeah. wh- in what? <laughs> what? what? What does he have to do for it to have gone too far? Like, Okay, so and then uh, he's one of those people where there is a section on their Wikipedia page that says alleged sexual assault, great. Uh, which great. I'm not going to get into that. You can read the entry for that, but uh, not great. Mm. Uh, and then the other thing I would like to discuss is his first wife, they got married. He, the ripe age of 32, his wife, 19. Mm, normal. Yeah. yeah. Legal. Importantly legal. <laughs> Definitely. I yeah. can't imagine. I have friends that are 32. I can't imagine one of them coming up to me and be like, oh, I'm seeing somebody new. Oh, really? That's great. Like, tell me about her. Well, she's a freshman in college. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we will, we love each other. Yeah. Yeah. And we're we're getting married now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, while she's nineteen. We didn't love each right. other a, a second before she turned eighteen. And now no. Oof. Was she was she pregnant? Did they have a, a baby? They eventually did. I, I can't recall the timeline of that. I believe what? they so have a child. Age age twenty. 
Wasn't his pickup? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't his pickup line for Catherine Zeta Jones was he said, "I'm going to have your babies," and like that was the Is line. That true? I think that's wow. on the Wikipedia. So yes, I can. You know what? Man. The weird thing is, I can picture him saying that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I can hear it in my head. It's Especially really yeah, having watched this movie, yeah, he just uh, kind of a kind of a creep in this movie too. You think maybe this? Yeah. he was so good in it because it, it's not acting. Just this pulling is just, from pulled, his personal yes. experience. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is a biopic about Michael Douglas. It's uh. not actually a rom com. <laughs> and let's let's not forget this is a Michael Douglas production. You get that in big bold letters when the movie. Starts. Yeah, he he produced this movie. He found the uh, the writer was working as a waitress, and then he opted her movie. Is that big what? air quotes? And found her. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, yeah, she she wasn't, this was her first script, and she was working on a second script uh, with the, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars she got from this one, and then she got hit by a car and died. What? That's, Jesus. That's that story, unfortunately. Oh, no. Yikes. I was about to make some joke about, like, was she a waitress at the college dorm cafeteria where he was hanging <laughs> out, but no, that <laughs> you know, feels it's in poor taste. I can't, I can't disprove that. Right. Mm. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, what a great guy. Mm. Anyway, that's enough Michael Douglas talk. Let's uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back to talk about the movie *Romancing the Stone* and more on the We're Talking Podcast. Are you fed up to here with this treasure hunt business? Yeah. Ira, you miserable worm! You lied to me. You said she was a city girl, out of her element. Just get her in the map and bring them back. Piece of cake. Piece of cake, my butt. What went wrong? I'll tell you what went wrong. <laughs> She's got herself a partner. Like shooting holes and everything. That's just the beginning of what's going on down here. And we're back on the Over Talking Podcast. We're once again by CJ's lovely wife, Emily, and we're talking about Romancing the Stone for Date Movie Month, week one. Emily, we're gonna put 30 seconds on the clock for you to describe for someone who's not yet seen Romancing the Stone, what it's all about. Ready to go. Okay. Uh there is uh oh this woman. She is absolutely living the life. Uh, she's like a writer. She's got a cat. She's living in New York City. Successful romance <laughs> novelist. It's the best part of the whole movie, if you ask me. Yeah. It explains a lot about why I chose it, perhaps. <laughs> anyway, she gets a call from her sister who lives in Colombia. Her husband has just been grisly murdered. Um, they, he's sent her a map. Somebody comes, Five, kills her building doorman. Four, he disappears. Three, we never see him again. Two, she goes to try to one. follow the map. Time! Hilarity, romantic, Not. sexual hilarity ensues. I, no. no. No? No. Sexy. <laughs> Disagree. Sexy. Sexual hilarity ensues. Sexy I want to I want to yeah. know what movie that is. Uh, it's this movie, Ken. Yeah. It's Romancing it, the no. Stone. Oh, God. Um, no, no hilarity. I agree, though. You didn't, even get to, you didn't even get to Michael Douglas, but maybe that's for the best. Well, it, it, I'd be happy to take more time. Every time I come on, y'all <laughs> give me the bum rush through the summary, and then I get blamed so for not doing a good then. job. Oh, yeah. my God. You knew it was coming. <laughs> That's fair. I think you made the mistake of actively watching the timer while you were trying to do it. It did make me feel self-conscious. <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, as we said at the top, this is we, why talk about Michael Douglas? Maybe the movie is better without him in this whole thing. Okay. So the the rest of the movie without Michael Douglas is she single-handedly uh, has has a map to a precious stone that she single-handedly mm-hmm. tracks down and retrieves and rescues her sister in yes. Colombia, which is definitely not Colombia. I'm pretty sure it's Mexico. While fending off a bunch of different cartel narco traficos and Danny, Danny DeVito. DeVito. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Danny All DeVito right. making a few racist comments. Just the, the one. Were there more? I just assume. I, there's definitely the one, but. Uh. Yeah. Sorry. Danny DeVito's yeah. character, not him. Yeah. Character. He's supposed to be really I like nice. Danny DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't write those lines. No, some waitress did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah true. Great. <laughs> some racist waitress. <laughs> Did you catch that there was uh, Danny DeVito makes a Batman reference before he appears as the Penguin later in his career? <laughs> no, and I'm sure that wasn't on purpose. But what was the reference? Uh, he made I, something about either Bruce Wayne. Or, I, I honestly don't remember. They're, they're in the cave. They've just found oh, the yeah. gemstone. Oh, he yes, pulls the gun on right. them, and he's like, now let's get out of here before Batman shows up. Yeah. I cannot believe wow. you did not commit this to memory. In the way it deserves. I'm trying to forget as much of the movie as possible. <laughs> you yeah. did keep the the Marvel reference though, which I appreciate. The Marvel reference? Or is Batman? No, Batman's DC. There you. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Yeah. 
relationships ending here on the podcast. <laughs> Forced. Man. Wow. Yeah. So why did you choose uh, Romancing the Star? Are you are you big uh, romance novel reader? I am. Smut, I'm not smut reader. No. Yeah. No. no. I uh, I've only read a. F- I guess I've guessed I've read some books that have romantic elements to them. I chose it because I absolutely loved this movie when I was like 13, 14, 15, like somewhere in those sort of early teen years, I wandered into the Palatine Public Library and picked this amazing VHS off the shelf and was like, this is the movie. And (laughs) I somehow snuck it past my parents. I was convinced they weren't because it was like, you know, it's a little sexy. So I was like, am I going to be able to, to watch this at home or whatever? And I did. And it just like, yeah, I just thought this movie ruled. And um, I wanted to see what I would think of it as an adult. And uh, and what do you uh, think? When was yeah. the last time you had watched it before now? Pro- probably when I was 14 or 15 and still thought okay. it ruled. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, it did, it did hold a special place in my heart for a while there. As, as the person getting to watch the movie with you, it was entertaining the amount of times you were like, oh, or like, oh, wow, that slipped past me when I was younger. <laughs> like oh, so yeah. many references or things happening. You're like, Oh, that yeah. went way over my head. Oh, yeah. At watching this as a kid, I thought the most exciting thing, I was like, ooh, kissing. And completely missed a lot of the much more obvious sexual yeah. undertones. Then <laughs> sort of sl- slide falling down the side of a hill in Columbia because it is raining and it got all muddy. And Michael Douglas's mm. character basically landing face first in between uh, her legs. And then kind of getting up and smiling. That's when Meg brought yep. up that Michael Douglas fact. That's when it happened. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. That's how I got it, was filming that scene. Yeah. <laughs> that's how that happened. The origin story. Immediate. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Wasn't the Giardia from the... for getting HPV on the set of a movie? I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. I thought it'd be fun to revisit. I. And was it? I have some regrets, if I'm honest. You know, like, they're like, never meet your heroes. It's, uh, there's some wisdom in those words, I think. Um, you can't go back. CJ, have, have you read a lot of romance novels? I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't think so. Not many are coming to mind. i rattling my brain here, yeah. All, so many of those comics are romance stories. <laughs> sure. I don't know what kind of comics sure. you're reading, CJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the other night I looked over and there was a lot of romance happening on the page. Oh. Between Iron Man and I'm blanking out her name, the Ice Queen. Iron Woman. No. No, this is Mrs. Night, Ice? Mrs. Men. Freeze. Two men? Yeah. Oh, that's uh yeah, that's uh Bobby, Iceman, and yes, his partner who I'm blanking on. Oh, so they are together. Yep. Okay. I think we've solved it here. Comic books, they're, it's scantily clad, tightly clad men and mm-hmm. women with romantic plot lines. Maybe this is just... B- bulges everywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's meant to be sexy. They're yeah. constantly saving each other. There are a lot of parallels, actually, wow. now that I'm thinking about it. Guys, the X-Men are, like, they're allies, I, I guess. <laughs> they, there's, a lot of, there's a lot going on in the X-Men universe, and they, they are all okay. for it. They're very open. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's great. I hope that whoever's listening has some power or some pool at Marvel, and now we can get like a romancing the stone romance Marvel crossover to happen. Like, no. the stone they find is one of the Infinity Stones. There you go. Yep. <gasps> yes. That's how we do it. Yeah. Oh my god. Which one do you Rebooting think Michael Douglas Infinity would be saga. going after? What do you mean? Which Infinity of, of the, Stone? Yeah, which Infinity Stone? Oh, there's the reality one. There's the strength one. There's the time one. I'm trying to think of which one he can. He he would be using nefariously, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Strength. The man seems vain. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Just maybe. wants to look big. Yeah. Uh, God. Also, uh, a lot of the drug use completely went over my head in this movie. When they find the plane full of pot and their kilos worth. Yeah, and he's just throwing bricks on the fire. Which, I didn't like, know what was going on then. I don't. I don't think that's how that would work. I don't think you can sustain a fire <laughs> yeah, from right? burning Wouldn't like burn green things or dead things at that point that are just flour. Like also, you, need, right. you need actual wood. <laughs> right. Right. But you also should not be lighting a fire inside a plane, which is yeah. your home. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. There's definitely no like hole in the roof to let the smoke out. So right. they would this be isn't passing Boeing. out from smoke inhalation. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, that she did, right? Even though Michael Douglas apparently was just so cool that he's able to handle the complete hotboxing of that. Not only that, thing. they find a fifth of, uh, I, I think, whiskey. That's what it looked like. And he, yeah. they, cu- they kind of like time lapse and half the bottle is gone and they're just breathing in weed the entire time. Yeah. Like, yeah, probably be dead. But he still has the presence of mind when a 12-foot snake appears to machete mm-hmm. its head off without taking her head off. I mean, yeah. wild. And make dinner with it. Yeah. yeah. You guys ever had a snake? Can't say that I have, no. I don't no. think so. Have you? I don't think I've either, no. no. But if you were going to have snake, that's the way to do it, right? That's, the, that's the point. On a pot yeah. fire. Yeah, in the Colombian yeah, jungle. Yeah, out of your mind. With Michael Douglas. So, Anything will taste good so at that drunk. point. Yeah. yeah. Um... This movie, I, I don't know if you guys have seen this movie that I'm thinking of. It's called The Lost City. It stars Sandra Bullock and... Uh, Channing Tatum? Uh, Channing Tatum, yeah. Channing Tatum. And it's about a romance novelist who then goes on a safari and then... It, the it's a remake from of Romancing what I can tell the from Stone. The trailer. Like, is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I watched that. I think is I've it mentioned it. Is it explicitly or is it like kind of just spiritually? I don't know that they ever call it out or or like i don't remember like a single thing about that movie it was very forgettable i think it was like just perfectly average unlike this one yeah this one's for sure not forgettable but uh, i would say less than average average. writing for the rolling stone uh david fear said speaking about uh the lost city the movie itself tries is trying to excavate a long lost genre the big budget action adventure movie star rom-com it wants to be a modern romancing the stone so badly you can almost see the flop sweat dripping down the screen oh damn Jesus Christ. H- have Scathing. you seen the lost city ken no i haven't oh. okay I so cj don't think i will be <laughs> no not after you've got enough <laughs> yeah gun to your head which one do you watch the lost city what yeah really? oh come on yeah. there's some funny parts and and stuff yeah it's are you saying there's even more saxophone in the lost city is that why you like it i hope so i don't remember but yeah i <laughs> laughed when that uh scene happened oh my god even the ending like when the credits are rolling man that sax is <laughs> flaring it is I, excellent what was it like kenny g or something i didn't even notice i was uh, too swept up in the not. story i guess i don't yeah, know I don't yeah. insult so. kenny g that he would debase himself to be a part of this movie <laughs> this movie was a <laughs> big deal was. at the time yeah yeah, yeah i know it probably was Ken, do you and Meg often sit down to watch like old rom coms, or was this very outside your wheelhouse? No, never. No, Meg has been. I, I mean, Meg has been letting me take the reins for movies for a very long time, and she's finally starting to be like, "Hey, actually, I think I would like to watch something other than horror movies." So, uh, we've been watching the Mummy movies recently. I think that's the closest we kind of we kind of get. Oh, um, yeah, did love the Mummy movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Now that Meg's got you on lock, she's starting to slowly <laughs> introduce. That's right, yeah. yeah, she put a ring on it, so now it's it's good. So now yeah. I have to watch other movies. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah, that's fine. Do you guys watch a lot of rom coms together, other than once a year for Day Movie Month? We did. I think the most recent example would be Fingernails. Yeah, I think we do, and it's because I ask to. <laughs> like, I love rom coms generally speaking, like as a genre. Mm. So, and then we did see Past Lives in theaters. Yeah, you know, oh, by the way, that's supposed to be good. Now I got a best picture nom. Yeah, but like the people in it, and more than that, I don't know. Yeah, that uh, I mean, when I was trying to pick like what movie to choose for this year's my annual over talking appearance, um, mm-hmm. I mean, Past Lives is by far the best romance movie. I mean, I'm still thinking about it nine months later oh. or whatever. Like it was so good, but I have some regrets. That, I guess that will continue to be the theme of Romancing the Stone. <laughs> you guys should watch Fingernails, too. It was good. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just pulled both up. That looks, they both look good. I'm excited yeah. to watch them. I picked nice. such a bad movie that now this over-talking episode will be about anything but the actual movie. <laughs> well, okay. Well, let's talk about the positives. What was everyone's favorite part of the movie? That, you know, I was trying to rack my wow, brain pause. about <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what are the redeeming qualities of this movie, and I don't know. I think that, or what I loved when I was a kid was, yes, what's her face, whatever the main character's name is, she is living the life, like, independent yeah. woman, got an apartment in New York City, her cat, she's got yeah. a liquor cabinet full of little bottles, like, whew, what yeah. class, I mean... 
I do, Amazing. I do, uh, I do commend someone that knows their limits of like, nope, my limit is I have one little tiny shot a night and that's, that's me relaxing. And I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I thought that you two would like the scene where the alligator bites off the bad guy's hand that's holding Dude, the oh, diamonds. Yes. Did you see that 100%. coming? 100%. I lost it when that happened. <laughs> I thought that was the coolest thing. There's a couple parts in this movie that are like straight up horror or like hint at like kind of giallo, like Italian horror with like every time that one, I don't know, the dude with the mustache, anytime he pulls Solo. out that switchblade. Yeah. Yeah. He it definitely he has like, like, gets a glint of light on it. That's mm-hmm. really cool. I thought you see that a lot in Italian horror. Yeah. It's and got then, that yeah, spaghetti that Western. Get his hand bit off clean off with the full <laughs> gore you see it happen oh mm-hmm. my god i lost it that was insane <laughs> i love that he continues he's just lost his hand i can't imagine how much blood he is losing <laughs> by yeah. the second and he's like nope i'm gonna keep going after the stone like yeah. just wrap it up keep going keep trucking no big yeah deal. Wrapped it up with like a scarf or something like that, like the flimsiest lights, of fabric. Yeah, literally lights a cigar on a, a sconce. Yeah, and then keeps going. <laughs> Badass. The, the fact that he continues to fight, what's her name, the main character, or whatever, and she's acting like it's a hard fight, and I'm Diane. like, the man just had a hand <laughs> cut off. How is this not an easy fight? Like during that fight, he comes at her with just a, a hunk of wood. Like he's got nails really, in it. Don't need to worry about it. <laughs> and, okay. Yeah. Well, then, I, okay, I do love the scene where she, right before that, when she has the knife, and you're like, all right, knife mm-hmm. versus one-handed piece of wood. We're good. Mm-hmm. And then she throws it, and he just catches it with the little wooden log. Like, that was and badass. it goes, thunk. Yeah, yeah, I was, was like, badass, well, come yeah. on. Yeah. I love that she's like, I'm going to use the tactic that I wrote in my own book <laughs> to see if this works in real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was a callback. See, this it movie had layers. Yeah. Like, yeah. I liked. One thing, one line that I particularly liked was right at the beginning of the movie when it's in like the world of her romance novel that she's writing. And one of the lines, or one of the last lines is like, this dude who killed my, my father, killed my wife, and stole my Bible. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was really that, funny. Yeah, that was To really end funny. on that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. All the other things before that are way worse. <laughs> way worse. It's like yeah. raped my sister or something yeah. awful. Yeah. Like, and stole my stole Bible. My Bible. I thought you were going to say, Ken, that your favorite line was when Michael Douglas is reconsidering his life choices. And I think the line he says is like, I could have been a doctor making 500000 a year up to my neck and tits and ass. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember <laughs> that line. Like Cosmetic surgeon. Cosmetic surgeon. Cosmetic yes. surgeon. Up to yeah. his neck and tits so and ass. So even yeah. more vain than a doctor. <laughs> God. There's a lot of gems in this movie, pun intended. Mm-hmm. No, that's yep. right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. CJ, did you like at least the hand getting bit off? I did. I, I mean, I like. I saw it coming in that they so over the top. He like catches it, and the the shot is showing that his hand is landed above the alligator pit, and he just holds it there for a few seconds longer. It's like, all right, yeah. well, <laughs> I know what's about I saw to it happen. Too. I didn't expect them to like show the stump of arm afterwards yes. that i was like whoa where did that because they have not showed any like gore up until that point at all so that no. that part was just like oh this is funny that got me by surprise yeah i expect it to happen because yeah it's, it's pretty obvious in telegraph that like there's a bunch of alligators and he's holding his hand out right in front of it but to see it bite through his hand and rip it off specifically that is so graphic <laughs> yeah just your like, classic rom com. Some horror movies, like it was, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, isn't I think this is isn't this PG thirteen too? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's probably how I snuck it past my parents. It's like this is fine. I'm thirteen. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> let me watch it. <laughs> it's age appropriate. Yeah, I also realized that each of us only has one sibling, and so like I feel like the whole premise of the mm. movie, like if my brother called me and he was like, "Hey, I just sent you a map to a gemstone, and now I'm being held." by whatever in Colombia, like come down and save me like are you guys you going you answering the call yeah yeah well, you're yeah, gonna of go course. yes what? are you not i'm paying somebody else to do it i think like i give them the Your map brother actually is in a foreign country right that's or true kind of. yeah so mm-hmm. that's part of the u.s a though, tropical <laughs> tropical jungle yeah. uh, sort of situation huh. yeah mm-hmm. could happen i get, get some ready. odd mail 
I'll know. I'll know what to do now. <laughs> yeah. Train up my Bowie knife skills. Pack my heels. Get myself to South That's America. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Don't don't own a single other pair of shoes, huh? They're just all heels. Of course. She is a classy, independent woman. Again, like. Yeah. Do you guys know Kathleen Turner from anything else besides this? Uh, I, th- I know her from one other thing, but I'll I'll save it. Oh. She looks familiar for sure. I yeah, I know her from uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh. Uh, she voices the animated female character. Jessica Rabbit. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. She, she was pretty big back in the day, right? Is it just? I don't she think was it's Jessica Rabbit. Isn't that from Bugs Bunny? Isn't mm. that? Oh, she's in Space Jam. Space Jam. Oh, yeah, she, yep. that's a different one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, whatever. I know her she's from Friends. Have you guys? Have oh. you guys watched all of Friends? Yeah. No. Okay, she plays Chandler's dad on Friends. Oh. What? Like, oh Chandler's yeah. Who, who that whole arc is either trans or cross dresses or something. Huh. Yeah. Okay. It's real weird. I don't know why they cast a woman uh. in that role, but. Well, do you guys know this? She was not the first pick to be the star of *Romancing the Stone*. Do you know the story oh, behind? No. There was another actress. I want to say Deborah Winger. I'm not sure if I'm getting that right, but there was another actress, and she was supposed to go like hang out with Michael Douglas as like a chemistry test. Which, like, hmm, whose idea was that, right? Oh, anyway, no. apparently, at some point, they're joking around, and she. Michael Douglas claims that she bites him on the arm and like bites him hard enough to like draw blood. And then he goes and Infects literally him with HPV. <laughs> HPV, yes. <laughs> That's how he got it. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah. She he goes and cries to like the the director and is like, I can't work with her. Like, and so we're gonna be alone in the jungle for how long? Like she's a biter or something. And then um, so she gets booted off the film and uh the other actor steps in. I have a strong feeling that's not how that actually yeah. went down. Yeah. If we were betting money, what do we think are the chances that she somehow rejected him in some way? And yes. Yes. yeah, 10,000%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. But hey, this might be a good uh, time to jump into some other fact uh, portion of the show because it's time for. Hey, did you know that? That's right, for new listeners, is the trivia portion of our show where we pit our guest and CJ head-to-head to see who knows the most about what we watched. Emily, CJ, are you two ready? Ready! Oh, yeah. All right. First question. Studio executives were so sure that this film was going to flop that the director, Robert Zemeckis, was preemptively fired from directing his next movie, Cocoon. It turned out that... This movie ended up being such a success that Zemeckis was able to go forward on his own project, his next project, which eventually became the ultra successful 1985 film called what? And this is multiple choice. Was it A, Back to the Future, B, Beverly Hills Cop, C, The Goonies, or D, Fletch? Back to the Future. I'll go Goonies, because why not? CJ is correct. Back to the Future. He got fired off Cocoon because he, they thought this movie was going to suck, and it kind of does. But then uh, <laughs> he got to make Back to the Future. Holy cow! I thought that was wild. Written and directed, I think. Did he write it too? Yeah, I wow. believe so. Am I the only person who doesn't like Back to the Future? Yes. Yes. That movie is pervy. It's a weird pervy movie. Just uh, with like the mom stuff. Yeah. And the yeah. Peeping Tom, and like, it's not a good movie. All yeah. 80s movies are. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Evidenced by this one. Romancing the Stone. Yeah. All right, next question. Do you guys know this movie as a sequel? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you already know the title? Yes. Ye- I mean, no. <laughs> okay, well, first person to yell out the title gets the point. Jewel so of the Nile. Like, yeah, I knew it had <laughs> Nile correct. in it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I had no idea. I mean, I... I'd only kind of heard of this movie to begin with, but but you were so uh, yeah, thrilled to that. find out that you could continue your journey the with Saga. I know yes. what I'm doing tonight. Mm-hmm. That's right, Emily. Have you seen it? I think so. Yeah, not okay. recently. Do you know? Do they just take that boat and then travel down the Nile or something like that? That sounds right. Yeah, okay. I don't remember to be honest. All right. Well, I can still work this question into the next one because a second sequel was planned but never made. What was it called? Was it A, The Crimson Eagle, B, Crocodile Tears, C, Romancing the Jewels, 
Or D, Jungle of Jewels. The first one sounds like a law firm that you would see on like a local commercial. The Crimson Eagle? Yeah. I thought it was sort of like a Hitchcock film. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to go with Crocodile Tears. You okay. reference that. So it's, okay, Romancing the Stone, Jewel of the Nile. I'm not going to do another jewel title. Yes. Well, I guess by the third movie, maybe your writers are yeah. third class. I don't know. And they want to make it. <laughs> what was the last one? The Jungle of the Jewels? Jungle of Jewels. I'm going to go with that one. Okay. Yeah, you're both wrong. Sorry. It's the Crimson Eagle. But what? that one? Made, so. Ah. Yeah. Crimson yeah. Eagle. Weird. All right. Next question. Uh, how old was Michael Douglas in this movie? Just closest. He looked the same age for so long. Yeah. It's hard to tell with him. Mm-hmm. 35. Oh, I was going to say 36. And CJ, you get the point, but he was 40. Okay. Oh. All right. Next question. How old was Kathleen Turner in this movie? He was 40. She was probably... 24. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like 31 or something, if that. Ooh, I mean, if it was any indication before, it is 19. She She's was 19? 19? I'm kidding. No, no. She was 30. <laughs> Like that. She likes interesting for being 19 years old. <laughs> yeah. Who gets the point then? Was it? I guess 31. Uh, yeah. 30. CJ got the point. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, what does the scores look like? I'm up three to one, I think. Okay. Well, let's make it interesting. This movie, uh, sorry, this next question is worth double points. Oh, wow. So we saw that maybe. coming. Let me back in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, but we're going to make it even Steven. So, what is the Rotten Tomatoes tomato meter score in percentage? You know what? Let's give Emily the advantage. Closest without going over. Emily, since you're behind, you'll go second. CJ goes first. Okay. You said it was a hit. Studio execs thought it was awful, though. So, what a, what, throw they, that they don't there. know shit. Studio execs <laughs> suck. I don't know anything about art. They're there to make profits. This, um, yeah, this is art. This is high class art. Right. This is, this yeah. is art. <laughs> No matter how bad, it's still art. <laughs> sure, it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, without going over, does it hit eighty? Let's go eighty. I'll, I'll okay. go. I'll go eighty-one. This was a big hit at the time, but do I think people retroactively went back? Oh, that might be the problem. No, let's do it. Eighty-one. You tied it up. It was Woo-hoo! eighty-six percent. Yeah, it's a good movie, guys. Not officially. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um. All right, well, then the tiebreaker is uh, in recent addition to our kind of final question here. What is the letterbox average rating oh. for this movie? And this is out of five and then down to one decimal point. Can we just say it on the count of three out loud? Well, my question first, though, is yeah, are sure. you two the only people who have checked it in on letterboxed? Like- I don't think I even have checked it in on letterboxed. <laughs> it's not worth it. Probably. Okay, on letterboxed is out of five? Out of five to the decimal point. First decimal point. Okay. All right, yeah. On the count of three. No more time. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. 2.5. Wow. <laughs> 2.6 and 3.5. Emily's our winner. What? Ah! It's actually 3.3. 3, That's but, shocking. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're just upset because you're finding out how wrong you are about this film. <laughs> Yeesh. People like it. It's sexy. Yeah. They, people like sexy stuff. Mm hmm. Not though. It's so hot, CJ. Come on. It is very horny. (laughs) Horny movie. What? Sorry, just for my own sake. What is the Rotten Tomatoes audience score? What are you gonna do if it's even higher? There's no way. (laughs) Continue to lose my faith in humanity if it is. Ninety-four percent. No way. You're lying. (laughs) Uh, Sixty-nine percent, which seems appropriate for this movie. (laughs) All right, that's better. Uh, well, I think it might be time for our readings then. Emily, on a scale of one to ten, what would you rate *Romancing the Stone* for you? Uh, well, <sighs> this is oh such a betrayal. Oh, a good side, big yeah. side of younger Emily. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's okay if you thought it was hot. Right, right, right. Yeah, we're all horned up. We all can admit that. <laughs> Look, Michael Douglas is undeniably these are good-looking people. Uh, yeah, in the rainforest. Um, 
I think back in the 80s, this movie was probably like, it was probably an eight. Like, it was great. You loved it. Wow. So good. But? But <laughs> as a full grown adult now, I'm going to go six. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. I think that's fair. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah. CJ. For me. Yeah, I was thinking like a five. This is just pretty, pretty mediocre. There's not, it's not a lot going on. Like it's, it's whatever. I'm not like mad at it, but it's not good. I wouldn't recommend this to anybody. They, they definitely can skip this. I can't imagine the sequel is, does a better job or anything. It's, <laughs> it seems like it's probably the exact same plot. CJ, although they're already together. Only one way for us to find no out. No way. Nope. Not doing Ooh. that. <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> Yeah, five. Please. Pretty. I'm never gonna watch this again. Pretty mediocre. So you're rating a date movie night with me a five. I'm rating the movie wow, Romancing <laughs> the Stone. Divorced. <laughs> Boom. Divorced. Ken. <laughs> For me, what I was originally thinking when the movie was done was four. Yeah. Okay. Um, because it's not. It's not great. A lot of a lot of parts are kind of boring, honestly. Yeah, but there's some fun set pieces, and then I remembered the alligator hand biting off scene, and it's getting, it's a getting full bumped point. up to a five. Yep, there it is. Yeah. yeah, I like that the movie gets one point for being a movie and a second point for an alligator biting off a hand. That's correct. Yep, yes. that's the scale. That's Ken's scale. Movies are hard to make, so you get a point for that. Yeah, right off the bat. Yeah, training an alligator to bite off a hand of an extra is even harder. So. Exactly. Oh, that was real? Oh, my God. The, the animals were not treated super well in this movie, No, right? they were yeah. not, no. That was the other thing, watching it as Dull Wars. I'm like, mm, yeah. I don't feel so good about this anymore. Kind of throws a cat. A tiny piglet gets, like, stepped on. They're but... doing little explosions around oh, God, goats right. who don't know that they're acting in a film. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. right. Yeah, it was the a bird iffy. cages, they crash into a car full of birds. Wow. and That looks of... real-ish. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think PETA would have a field day with this movie. Yeah, not great. Nope. They chopped a snake in half. <laughs> that was real? I th- I actually feel like that might have been real. I don't know. It looked, it looked pretty real to me. It when, did look good. I put it past them. Past them. It was the 80s. <laughs> Anything yeah. flew yeah. back then, I think. Well, Emily, thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah. I had a, had a <laughs> great time. I hope, hope you two had a good time watching this together, holding hands. Yes. Feeling super romantic. As we romance yeah. the stone. What does that title even mean? Anyway. I don't. No idea. I, How I, do you woo I a stone? Know. Whatever. We did it. So. Yeah. <laughs> we did do it. Yeah. Good job, guys. Stone has been romanced. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, do you have any words of wisdom at the end here? Or, uh, or anything yes. to share with our audience? Watch past lives, not romancing the stone. Yeah. I yeah. second okay. that. Well, thank you again for, for joining us. CJ, what do we have to plug? Uh, you can go head on over to Instagram and give us a follow at Over Talking Pod. You can see the wonderful images that Emily herself makes for us. That's right. Yes. Free labor, baby. Woo! Woo! Uh, you can follow us on all the things. TikTok as well. We make little videos at Over Talking Pod on all the things. Email us like actor Wayne Knight did at overtalkingpod at gmail.com. Go to our website, overtalkingpod.party. It's a real website. That's right. Oh, no, they're here. Ah! Ah! Okay. It's the Overtalking Overlords. They have brought flowers. That was very nice. Uh, yeah. Wow. You guys know it's State Movie Month. Oh, no. They're just shaking their heads now. And they're they're crumpling up the flowers. Oh, One of them's okay, eating I'm, I'm it? Gonna go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Here we go. Uh, they're here to remind me to remind you. If you like the show, please go on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify and rate and review where applicable. Uh, reviews help people find this podcast. Also, we spend in the money in advertising. So if you like the show, please tell a friend and spread the word. We would really appreciate it. Thank you. If anyone wants to sponsor us, I think we did a pretty good job at Magic Mind. So you know where to find us. So <laughs> how, how much would it cost me to run an ad? What to pay you guys to say whatever I want you to say? How much? We like to let the seller offer first before we should throw out a dollar amount. That's kind of like. Are you offended by low balls? Down and then yeah. We just take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The illusion of power. We ultimately right. will accept it, but right. okay. Yes. Good exactly. to know. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll tell you right now, the threshold is pretty low right now, <laughs> so we'll take what you can offer. And as we say at the end of every single episode, up, up to, to my, my neck, neck and tits, tits and ass. ass. Woo! Bye.
Bye. Bye. This episode of the Overtalking Podcast was produced by Ken and CJ, edited by CJ. This week's special guest was Emily. Music by Justin Peters, logo by Nate Richards. Check out Nate's work on Instagram at Nate Richards Designs. 